Previously on Dungeons and Dragons, Flint, Thea, and Nulara facing down a group of cultists who are now charging towards them. I, I just whisper, "Glow, motherfuckers!" and I and I cast fairy fire. They say, "Wait, you don't run." Four of the other ones rush forward ahead of them. They can't hurt me anyway. I'm in the front. Don't worry about it, guys. In a series of eight scimitar attacks that they rolled with advantage, the first one runs forward and starts swiping at you, but you you just absorb this energy. You alarm out of the corner of your eye, you think you see a dark shadow. Guys, I think someone's getting away. We have to stop them. Girl, what you talking about? Huh? Could we just pretend we didn't see you? We're not gonna let you go. I'm just gonna rip his weapon out of his hand. Maybe, maybe slap him lightly. <laughs> uh, so you have a, a prisoner now. Hmm. We, we take prisoners. It's a new thing we're trying. All right, so uh, let's keep going to the sacrifice chamber then, Stefan. Yeah, okay, great. And as you step down that way, the Jacorn kick back on. You guys keep walking. Nulara, you feel like you hear something behind you. Uh, so I say, did you guys hear that? Can you hear that? And I like kind of have stopped and I'm like not totally turning around. You two don't hear Nulara. Yolara turns and looks behind her and then looks back and she is in a dark, silent hallway. Welcome to Dungeons & Dragons. We're a D&D 5th edition actual play podcast and I'm your Dungeon Master, Russ Moore, and with me today is Tom Blair. Hey, that's me. Up first this time around because Amy's too busy laughing. I play <laughs> Flint Firebeard. And Carla Johnson. That Amy and her laughing so charming. Russ thinks so. I play Nulara Moonbrook. And Amy Moore. <laughs> I like to mouth the words so long when Russ says the intro. And I didn't think he noticed until right now. And I play <laughs> Thea Amastasia. I know, but my head is so small on that teeny tiny thumbnail. And picture. then there's the thing called peripheral. <laughs> <laughs> do I do a lot of head movements? Yeah, you're real <laughs> sassy with it. <laughs> We're actual play podcast. If you want to see Amy make fun of me in person, <laughs> you can visit our Patreon, patreon.com slash dumbdragoncast. Boom, we get like a ton new patrons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm there. Just, just a dollar a month, you <laughs> can watch the Skype calls or video recordings of the uh, episodes we play. They're unedited, so they're <laughs> full of all that gloriousness, all included. Russ and I are trying to have a conversation. Just the two of us. Well, Tom and Carla both get water at the same time. It's weird. <laughs> Thought we did okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm second guessing. <laughs> and we... oh. uh, also, part of our patron patronage Patreon, uh, we dedicate an episode to a lovely patron who today... Is Carla and Nap? <gasps> I thought it was Carla Johnson. I think Nap. 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 Either or. Yeah, and either way, yep. name. it's yeah. a Carla, so she's yeah. the best, or one of the best. Or she's pretty good. Best. It's all a oh. tied one situation. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. So thank you, Carla. Thank you for being a patron. And if you want to check yes. it out, Patreon.com/slash/DumbDragonCast. Fuck it. Let's play D and D. Flint, Thea, Stepfin, uh. and Nulara are still walking down the hallway. If I walk beside him, are we Stepfin Wolf? And Donnie or no Donnie? <laughs> That's, That's right. awesome. And, and Donnie. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, yeah, sorry. Donnie is there as okay. well. You are walking down the hall that Stepfin has said where it is leading you towards the sacrifice chamber. And you are listening to the shaking of the mountain above you as the Japorn blares again. Outside we see the dragons answering its call and increasing their ferocity. And they are tearing apart ships and landing and picking people up and throwing them into the air. We see the allied forces being torn apart as the metallic dragons try their hardest to fight back at the increasing number of chromatic dragons. (laughs) 
Nulara, you appear to be standing in a hall. And your friends, to you, appear to be gone. Guys? 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 Your voice echoes down the hall. More so than it did before. The sound of the Dracorn that you heard briefly is gone. Okay, I'm gonna, like, try real hard to psychic link with Donnie. Can I do that? Yeah, you sense him there. Okay. Because we can, like, communicate telepathically, so I want to try and, like, send him a message, like, Donnie, I can't see you guys. I'm gone. And I'm, you know, kind of freaking out. You're sending this panicked message, and... Well, you sense that Donnie's there, he isn't responding in the way that you would expect him to respond to something so panicked. In fact, um, he's humming a little tune inside his head that says, I wish I could eat Stephen. <laughs> he's gonna taste so real good. I wonder if I can eat him very soon. I hope we stop walking so I can eat him up. Donnie, Donnie, I'm not with you. What are you, Donnie? His song stops, and you hear a voice come from behind you that says, I don't think they're going to be able to respond to you right now. Okay, I mean, I guess I turn around to see what I see. You turn, and you see a dark figure. Looks like he's dressed in a large black robe that is shielding his face in shadow. In fact, he looks like he is entirely shadow. And he says, Nulara, you... You've been doing good work for me. Oh, so you're responsible for this. And I, like, point at the dagger? Is that you? This your work? You could say that. Yes. Hmm. Cool. So... Who are you? I, I am a man of many names. I have been around a long time. I have seen many people try to wield the dagger, and none have done quite so wonderfully as you. Well, I'd say thanks, but that's a terrible compliment. I don't want the dagger. I want to be done. Also... FYI, your timing is fucking terrible. We're trying to stop the rise of Tiamat. Can you press pause on this for, like, a day? Whatever this is? You'll be back with your friends in, in just a moment, don't worry. I feel like we can help each other in this. The dagger holds a lot of power. I see you yourself have a lot of power already. In your moment of need, or your friend's moment of need, the dagger will be an ally in this place. And for what? I can't imagine you're just giving me this power as a gift, so like, what's, what's the deal here? The deal is... Every time the dagger is used, my power becomes greater. Now, that may sound like you don't really like it, because uh, you have yet to succumb to the dagger's will that some others have previously. But be it Tiamat or myself, I feel like there would be more order in a regime brought up with uh, yourself and me. Right. So you're looking for, like, a minion? <laughs> no, a partner. Mm-hmm. Make a wisdom saving throw. 18. You, for the first time since you've held this dagger, feel like what this person is saying is 
swaying your opinion of the things that you have had to do and the things that you can feel like are being suggested to you. So I'm starting to feel like he's making, he's talking some good sense. Yeah. You told me before that I wouldn't have to hurt my friends and I don't want to have to hurt my friends. You don't have to hurt your friends. Now or ever? You won't have to kill your friends. In fact, your friends can come along with you and us. Well, as I said, kind of busy right now. So, I'd love some help stopping Tiamat. That'd be great. Um, and maybe we can revisit this whole partnership idea after we stop the end of the world. That sounds good. Perhaps I can show you a good will of faith. And he says, wake up. And you are back walking behind your friends. You turn around and you see a skeletal figure standing behind you. In black dragon scale armor. The skin, due to time, stretched out over this man's face. Long, flowing black hair as he raises what looks like a deadly, green, glowing sword towards you. As he swings his blade down, you get first action. Well, then I'm going to swing my blade at him. Fuck that guy. Uh, <laughs> 15. Does not hit. Your first hit is knocked down by his sword and hits the ground. Guys, we're getting attacked. You you all do hear the clang of the blade as it hits down, and then Nulara call out to you. Uh, it's a 22, this one. That will hit, yes. 15 damage. You strike in and find a break in his armor, and he says to you... It is going to be so nice to be able to bring the decimators of dragons to watch Tiamat rise. And he strikes down at you. First one was a 14. Second one was a 25. Third one was a 22. Okay. I mean, the second two obviously be Uh, my AC. You managed to parry the first one away, and the second two strikes hit One on your shoulder and one on your leg. You take 30 necrotic damage. Fuck. Damn. Shit, son. And you must make a constitution saving throw. Oh, my God. Uh, 20. Okay, good. Um, Should Donnie go now with me? I think he was right beside me. Uh, Yes, Donnie can go. Okay. I mean, I'm in the way, so he's not going to... Want to breath it. So he tries to bite. It's a 10. He'll try again, but 12. 12 does not hit. What a surprise. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and are we, how wide is this hall? Like 20 feet? Like. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it is 20 feet. Just needed to know. I didn't, I didn't want to. I can't just take all the damage from this guy. I don't want to just be the human shield this time. Back to the top. It is uh, New Lara's turn again. <laughs> Okay. Back to the top. You guys just rolled in initiative. Shit. Uh, sorry, I didn't think it'd be my turn again. I already shrunk my character sheet so I could look at your beautiful faces. Yeah. Uh, 23. <laughs> and that is 18. Next attack is a 27. Yes. 22. You are hitting solidly. Um, and it doesn't seem like the damage that you think you're doing is being equally distributed through to your target. That seems right, damn Crypt Keeper dude. Um, I'm gonna, like, sort of... Hmm, can I? Can I, like, back away? I want Donnie to be able to try and breath weapon him, but I don't want to disengage and let him attack me. How's that work? Uh, well, if you want to back away out of range, you would have to disengage. You have taken two actions, though, so you don't have that option. So if you okay. back away, then he has an attack of opportunity. 
I'm not really into that, so. What if she just, like, ducked as that fire breath was coming out? <laughs> yeah, just, like, flatten yourself on yeah. the ground. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. But yeah. there will probably still be a dexterity saving throw. Yeah, right? the, sk- yeah. the skeleton has a turn next, though, right? So if you make well, yourself yeah. prone on the ground, yeah, it's like- not. It's not a great strategy in the long term. Um, okay, well, Donnie will try and chomp him. That was an eight, so that won't do it. Oh my god! And that was a crit fail, so that definitely won't do it. Donnie's spooked by the sudden attack and flies wildly. It is Flint's turn. Flint, you hear coming from a hall up into your left. You hear Drake roars. All right. And you also have Stephen in hand. So how far away am I from this black armored soul crepe keeper dude? You were at the front, so we'll say probably at least 15 feet. And then you're another uh, about 20 feet from the hallway where you hear Drake's. I'm going to shake step in a little and say, like, who the fuck is that? Um, that's, that's, uh, that's Nergoth Blade Lord. And, uh, what's his deal? He's one, he's one of the, the, the originals of the cult. Oh, an OG. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they call him. Original Greg. Did did I, I notice know. that New Lara's attacks <sighs> didn't seem to be doing as much damage? Make a perception check. Okay. Uh oh, fuck! That's a good roll. That's an eighteen. Yeah, you notice her hitting pretty solidly, and you don't really see any sort of usual like, blood spatter or anything. But being that he was, you were just told that he's an original Greg. It could mean that he's just super strong. Do I have more time to talk to Stefan? <laughs> How much chatty time you, does he I'll have? I'll give you one more question. Uh, what was that other noise we heard up ahead? Uh, it's the Drakes. A new mixtape, or <laughs> feel like you've made that made that joke already? Probably, yeah. probably. Yeah. We just haven't faced Drakes in a while. It seems like it's like it's fresh again. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, maybe maybe I'll go tell them. I'll go tell them to. He starts walking. I'll go tell them that you, you mean no harm and that they should go back to sleep. Are you trying to, like, ghost your voice <laughs> to sleep? <laughs> That's a 16 deception. I mean, do I have a, oh. do I have a roll against that? Uh, in, insight. Okay. Uh, let me just go to my page here. Insight. So it's a... Ooh, it's a 15. You feel like he, he might... Like you're you're not a hundred percent soul, but you feel like he might be just be like, oh, I'll just go put them back to sleep. All right, I'm gonna as I move towards Blade Lord, dude. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw like not overly hard, but I'm gonna toss him down on the way. I'm gonna st- toss Stepin down. All right, he is uh, prone on the ground, and I'll move in to attack uh, Mister Mister Blade Lord. Uh, so that's a twenty-two. Mm, that will hit. 16 slashing damage. Uh, you definitely get the feeling that um, not all of your efforts are being rewarded in this okay. situation. I am going to put my axe away and draw out my moist tongue longsword. And I'm going to say moist. And I'm going to stab at this guy some more. He says, I welcome it. Uh, so that's a 21. He is all, like, dried up and, like, corpsey. He probably right? wants a little hydration. Who wouldn't in this situation? It, it puts the lotion on the skin. Anyone else. Any other person. Anyone else. You should probably <laughs> call it the moist maker. The moist, moist maker. A oh. <laughs> <laughs> little ode worse. to friends, but this is disgusting. Uh, no, Ross is the worst. Ross gets no love here. <laughs> uh, six... Teen slashing damage plus six cold damage. You feel like that did a little bit more to him. Okay, I'll go for a third attack as well with the uh, moist tongue longsword. Uh, oh, that's a crit 19. <gasps> yeah. Okay, um, so is it all of the dice are doubled, Russ? Uh, yeah, dice are doubled, modifiers just single. Okay, I'm going to do the, the D10... Plus first for just the slashing damage, okay. and then I'll do the 4d6 separate for the cold damage. Okay. 
Okay, uh, so that's 16 slash. Mm-hmm. 14 cold damage to go along with it. Ah, uh, yes. I feel the... <laughs> so cold. So cold. Oh, wait. I, feel the so cold. I am already dead and already cold of heart. It is uh, Nergoth Blade Lord's turn, and he says, I welcome you, new friend. It critically fails. So he oh, just, no. he what just happens to Nergoth Blade Lord? He throws his sword in the air, which is in a flourish. He waves it around like he just don't care. And, <laughs> and like it's like his armor slips. From the moisture. From all that moisture. And smacks yeah, himself right? in the back of the head from all that moisture. He says, what? <laughs> what vileness is this? And strikes out again at Flint for the first one. Uh, that's going to be a 21. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 20 necrotic damage. Plus, uh, you got to make a constitution saving throw. It's very burly. Uh, that's a 19. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, and he strikes his... So disappointed, Russ. And he strikes again with the sword at Nulara as well, who is still within range. That's a 19. Yep. That'll do it. Uh, so that's uh, the 9 slashing damage does nothing, but the 10 necrotic damage, it does. Uh, Thea. Uh-huh. <laughs> Your turn. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that's me. Yeah. Um, I'm going to run up and kind of like get to the front of the pack here. Bolster my dudes to the side. I'm going to run up and I'm going to bite them. <gasps> not 20. Damn. I'm not even going to roll. I'm not even going to roll my second one. Who cares? <gasps> Maximum damage. <gasps> that's 12 <laughs> plus... <gasps> 10, 22, oh my goodness. plus 4. That's 26 damage. Nicely done. Also, you must succeed on a uh, strength saving throw or be knocked prone. Uh, that's a 23. Okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not going to take the wind out of my sails. Oh, hello there. We're not introducing ourselves anymore because people already know who I am. So, hi, everybody. Welcome to the middle of the show. Hi, you probably know who we all are, not just Russ. I don't know why he was like, <laughs> I'm the DM, so I'm pretty sure. Carla's yeah. for sure waving right now. I waved. Yeah. I, I know that's why I waved. Russ waved and yeah. then I, I waved too. Waving. So many waves. Uh, thank you for joining us for episode 78 of Dungeons and Dragons, a show of good faith. And if you're liking what we're doing here on the show which hopefully you are, seeing as we're on episode 78, join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash dumbdragoncast, where you can join our lovely community of people and get some sweet perks and rewards and stuff. Like for our $2 patrons, we sent you guys a holiday card. It's true. And you get a whole bunch of, of like bonus content that's different stories with different characters and Tom leading some of that and different yeah. games and... So that's fun. It's a lot of fun. And uh, we just had our monthly Goog Hang, which was a blast. Oh, yeah. Always such a fun time. At that $2 tier, you get to join us in that one. Th we, once a month, we hang out for an hour. We we we, we talk hot goss. And, <laughs> and how uh, right Amy is all the time. And how right all the dang all time. All the dang time. How right everybody is except Russ all the time. Um, and it's just a great time. So you can go check that out, patreon.com slash dumbdragoncast. And um, if you're unable to do that, because sometimes just we get it. It's a pledge. It's a monthly thing. Totally. We totally understand. But there are other things that you can do to help the show reach more ears and grow a little bit bigger. And some of that includes writing reviews. Like some of these lovely people that we're going to talk about right now and tell you how awesome they are for telling us that we're pretty great. Let us tell you how awesome they are for telling us how awesome we are. All right. This was a Facebook uh, review from a Brad Zimmerman. He gave us five stars, which is awesome. Thank you so much, Brad. He says, I love the dumb dragon crew. Great fun to listen to and just makes me want to play, play, play. I think that's like the goal. We want people to play, play, play. Yeah, that's right. it. Yeah. Zytunes. 
Uh, this is an iTunes one. Ooh, yes. this is an or iTunes an Apple review. Apple Podcast. Apple Podcast. Get the branding right. Gosh. Gosh. It's like I don't know anything about that kind of stuff. This one is by Skim Border OC from the USA. And they say, PCs, NPCs, and DM run headlong into adventure and drum up some of the funniest dialogue around. Full story segments in every episode with minor out-of-character banter. All of this makes for a great flow and easy immersion. Accidentally homebrew rules keep things a little soft core, as well as suited for non-rude Nazi types. Okay, I'm assuming they're made non rule Nazi. Be rule rule Nazi. Nazi. Yeah. But we don't want any yeah. rude Nazis. I don't either. want no. rude Nazis. No, either. none of them either. Only no. those only, only those really polite nice Nazis. Ones. Jeez. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> take the hard line, guys. No Nazis. No at all. Nazis. Fair enough. Oh, wow. I, yeah, oh. yeah. I said it. Okay, yep, yep. So <laughs> best of all, <laughs> no politics. Grandstanding in the middle of D D fun. Yeah, we don't talk politics. <laughs> Except right now when we say no Nazis. Yes. Yeah. Is that yeah. politics? I mean, I, don't know. I kinda, guess, they, but... Yeah, they kind of set us up there. But, yeah. Oh, Sorry well. about that, Skim Border OC. It's, it's all good. We won't get too far into it. And thank you. My turn. It must be my turn. Is it my turn? Your turn. I guess okay, it's your turn. Okay, this is also from Apple Podcasts. Uh, it is from Airsick Jungle. Which I feel like needs like a sweet guitar lick after that username. Russ, can you put that in in post? Or, nope. No, that's even better. That's so much better. Don't put Tom anything in, in post. Um, they say, definitely binge worthy. I'm a fairly new listener and I'm finally caught up after about two months of solid binging the show. I love the chapters, but even more, I love the group's dynamic. That's us. They like us because we're friends. Because we we pretend we're friends at least we don't, we're not really friends oh, when it's guys, I'm not pretending. I'm also not I'm not this good at pretending. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, that's true. That's true. Hmm. Oh well, I guess we're friends. We also want to uh, give a pretty pretty huge shout out to um, at Pod Candy Review on Twitter. There there isn't a day that goes by that they don't share us to somebody looking for podcast recommendations. Oh, uh, that's awesome. So many times. Uh, like sometimes it's like 10 times in a day. So Hello. thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. No thank kidding. you. Thank you so Pod much. Candy review. Yeah. Jeez Louise. Um, and so if you would uh, care to leave us a review, we would really appreciate it. And we'd love you so, so very much. Yeah. Can't you just tell by the sounds of our voices, how just unbelievably <laughs> smitten we are for reading these things. Like <laughs> <laughs> we love it. We love you. We, we hope you, you are awesome. Uh, for for no, that's not a good way to say that. We, we hope, hope you're awesome. We hope you're awesome. We hope you're doing awesome. We know you're awesome. We know, we know you're, you're awesome. awesome and hope you're doing awesome. That's what I meant. There you go. See, this is why we're a team <laughs> because we pick up the slack where when when I don't say things right. <laughs> so if you could do that, that would be super great. Apple Podcast, Stitcher, Pod Chaser, Pod Knife, Facebook, Pod Bean. Uh, I don't think they allow your reviews, but if you oh. if they do, go for it. We'll find it and we'll read it. <laughs> Because thank you. Um, links for everything mentioned today can be found in the description, including the Dungeons and Dragons Discord and the Reckless Play Guild Facebook group, where we have joined up with the End of Time and Other Bothers, Dark Dice, and the Lucky Die, and we talk D and D, and we talk the shows, and we have a grand old time over there too. So you can come get to know us, and we can get to know you, and it's just a great time. Uh, over the fat past few episodes, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but we've also started making a bit of shift in the music that we're using. So a shout out to Scott Buckley, scottbuckley.com.au. He makes amazing Creative Commons comp- compositions. I can say that five times fast. Creative Commons compositions. That's the one. Got it. And a lot of them are perfectly tuned to the emotions that we're just trying to just harp on in this last last little bit of the arc here. Just like pulling at those heartstrings and emotional highs and lows so go check him out at his website there watch his twitch streams and and stuff because he's awesome next episode will be out next wednesday april 3rd well let's get back to this one and see what's going on have a great week we'll talk soon you hear those those drake barks coming from behind you and they have entered the tunnel Stefan sees them and uh, begins running towards them and past them. <laughs> Peace out, motherfucker! I mean, we all knew it was gone. coming, so... Uh, yeah. The four drakes rush towards you. 
And each of them move to attack you. Two on Flint, one on Nulara, and one on Thea. Uh, so we'll go Flint. Two attacks. One with its bite, one with its tail. That's a 13 and a 9. The second one, 17 and a natural 20 with its tail. Tail attack will hit. Well, of course, because it's a nat 20, so it would hit regardless, but... Yeah. So that's 13 bludgeoning damage that you receive from that tail. I will take 10 of that bludgeoning damage, thank you. The, uh... Yeah? That's an 18... Yeah. And a 23... 22... Nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's 7 piercing damage. Ouch. And... I growl. 4 bludgeoning damage. Jesus. And Nulara, it, neither of those would have hit you anyway. So now there are three drakes right behind you. And we're back up to the top. It's Nulara. I am going to just attack again with Dragon Slayer. Oh my god. <laughs> it's hard when you have such a small surface. Like, I didn't realize how aggressively you I need, rolled. You need a little rolling box. There you go. Uh, yeah, I do. I should get something so it's a bit more contained. Uh, that first attack is a 12, so probably not going to do it. Uh, sorry, no, you're attacking Nergoth? Yes. Yeah, no. Okay, how about a 27? <laughs> that okay. one worked better? <laughs> that one works What better. if you averaged both of them? Mm. <laughs> so that is 16 slashing, 6 magic. I'm going to... Get Donnie to try and bite a Drake, I think. Sure. Rather than the fucking gross dead dude. Oh, yeah. I put uh, my mess on him. Doesn't taste good. Yeah, it seems like kind of grody. Uh, he rolled a 10 that time, so not great. Uh, how about a 21, though? Yeah, 21 will hit. Okay, so that is 11 damage on a Drake. He takes a big chunk out of the back of this Drake. Nergoth Blade Lord for his first one moves to strike Nulara. 27. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and a constitution saving throw as you take your 20 necrotic damage. Oh, God. Oh, God. This really, this guy's really getting me. Not good. Um, well, that's a 7. So, not great. Not great, guys. Um, your hit point maximum is reduced by 20. <gasps> no! Rude! The second attack goes towards Flint. 16. His third action, he is disengaging and begins moving uh, quickly back down the hall. Flint's turn. Okay. So he's about, he's moved about 30 feet down the hall there, Flint. Doesn't seem like we're over, like, how, can I roll a perception roll or anything to see if he still looks okay? Yeah, it certainly doesn't seem like we're hurting him much. Like, condition-wise? Yeah, you don't even need to roll a perception. He's definitely taken a, a large amount of damage. Uh, there are serious signs of wear showing in his armor. Roll an insight. <laughs> I mean, he could nah. he could just be running because he needs the cardio. Okay, dead guys often need cardio. It's true. Rule yeah. one. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you figured he's like thirty feet away, thirty five feet. What did you say? Uh, about thirty. So technically, out of my reach of twenty five. Then. Oh yeah, you're sh you, you're hey, your little guy. legs. He's not slow. Right. Yeah, he just stubby just legs. Little tiny legs. Uh, yeah, it puts him back at the T where you you had turned left. Um, but yeah, he's just outside of your your quick walking range. Uh, I don't know, is this one of these times where we let him go so we don't all die? I mean, I don't know. I feel like this guy's got some serious, like, mojo on his side. So if we can... Yeah. But if we are hurting him, then it's... Ah! Ah! <laughs> Mm. I'm gonna put you on a timer in just a moment here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just, uh, just having a think here. Don't worry about it. You need a recap of the scene around you. 
Uh, okay, well, as far as I remember, there's the three drakes behind us. Uh, this dude has moved. There are, there are four drakes oh, behind four drakes? you. Okay. The dude has moved 30 feet away. Okay. Stepan, you've turned, you kind of see periphery. He has, he has left. He is no longer <laughs> Turn, in yeah. sight. Makes sense. Coward. Yeah. All right, I'm going to use one of my actions to dash. Okay. And I'm going to head back over him and attack him just a whole bunch. Okay. Just a whole bunch. Uh, also, are we still doing healing surges? Because I would like to do one of those. <laughs> yeah, you can do one whenever you want. Excellent. I'm gonna do one right now as I'm uh, as I'm heading over there. Sweet. Give me those twelve hit points. Okay. Uh, so with my guess second action, because I burned one dashing. Yep. Uh, I'm going to attack him. Uh, and that is a twenty-one. That will hit. Okay. Healing up my. Uh, Moist longsword here, 27 damage. He's definitely really not looking good. Okay, gonna hit him again. Make a percep. Hold on, make. Bef- you can you can keep no, no, that no, roll, no. whatever it was. <laughs> no, no, it's <laughs> no, fine. It, 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 it was a 24 for attack, but I don't want to do right. it if that was like yeah, if you're no, doing something. Make a make uh, make a perception roll as uh, you know as you're swinging this last attack here. Okay. Uh, that's a critical 19. You hit him. A real hard with this last one but then through your backswing you see coming down the hall towards you a horde of zombies how far how far away from me are they 20 feet okay as a little bonus action am I able to grab that finger bone and break it in half yeah. Perfect. I'm going to do that because it casts protection from undead on me. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And I'm going to keep attacking this fucking guy. Uh, hold on. I have to make sure nothing specific happens when that happens. Way to remember the items that you have. I'm very proud of you. Me, t- me too. I'm like, I knew I had it. Forgot what it did. Okay, so scroll of protect- er, uh, protection from undead. Uh, you must know at least uh, 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 causing a five foot radius sphere around you that moves with you for five minutes or until dispelled to enter the sphere or target those within an un- with an undead creature must make a wisdom saving throw on a fail the creature cannot enter or target those inside on a pass the undead creature is not subject to the effects so it's got to make a saving throw. Um, Nergoth Blade Lord is already within that because sure. you yep. did that. Um, but yeah, the other things coming towards you will have to make a saving throw in order to get at you. Okay. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. But it doesn't. It doesn't like turn them away, which I thought it might. No, do. it does. What? Yeah. Whenever you move as to force an undead creature into the sphere, oh. it fails a save, it's pushed back oh, 15 yeah. feet. Keep reading the spell, Russ. Mm-hmm. You gotta read to the uh, end. So, Nergoth Blade Lord, as you crack this thing, uh, wisdom saving throw, that's a... a 17. Reader. So, he passes. Okay. So, he is still within your sphere. Perfect, because I want to keep yeah, attacking wanna... him. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's exactly Perfect. what I wanted. Uh, okay, so that previous attack roll was a 24. That will hit. Yeah. Okay. 25 damage. Tell me what happens when you kill their goth blade lord. Um, Killed original Greg. <laughs> I'm assuming that I like just completely put all my muscle into this last attack, and as the moist longsword, like, yeah, that's right, Amy. I gotta keep saying it. Thanks a lot, Ty. Does it plunge <laughs> into him? No, it doesn't plunge into him. As it touches him for the last time. He just kind of crumples into nothingness. Like, there's still a husk, yeah. but it's just kind of sure. on the ground, kind of shriveled. I like like an old leather bag. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I like that. Um, okay. Um, it's gross I think, imagery happening. No, it's I perfect. It. I love it. That's all you can do for your turn? Well, I mean, I did have the option of an action surge, but if I don't need to take it, I'm not going to take it, so... Uh, I mean, the the closest zombie is 25 feet from you. You have just killed Nergoth. I'm going to let the zombies come to me, because I can do that, because I've got that protection, and they need to pass the save to get to me. 
Sure, 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 sure. But yeah. I'm gonna bite one. They look juicy. I'm gonna re-roll because I have advantage. It looked thick with two C's. <laughs> yeah, it did. Thick. And that's a 17 plus 6, so I win. <laughs> 20, 23. Game over, guys. Amy won. Game over. Yeah, I roll won. your damage. That's it. Uh, my damage is 2d6 plus 4. I mean, I know we can write the story as we go, but I didn't think we could just say, I win. <laughs> Would have been such a short podcast. <laughs> uh, 7, and he has to have a DC, uh, no, a uh, strength saving throw. Yeah, he's prone, motherfucker. You bite into this tree. I'm taking a bite out of crime. And knock it to the ground, uh, which is a very difficult process for you, but you manage to do it. The sound of the dracorn fades, and you hear the rising, groaning yells of the oncoming zombie horde as it rounds the corner near Flint. From behind you, you hear down the hall calls from humanoid or human creatures as they move in to fully surround you in the volcanic halls of the Well of Dragons. Johnny doesn't know about rhyme. Yeah, he's not no. a great rhymer. No. <laughs> and I have seen many people try to wield Dagger McFuckface. You didn't say Dagger McFuckface. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he has been referred That'd be to as really that. really great, though, if would be he could great. force him yeah. to say that. I've needed you to kill Stefan this whole time. <laughs> it has led to this moment. <laughs> Stefan is my nemesis. Stefan is the key to the whole Dagger thing. <laughs> Um, McFuckface Mac- and Moonbrook Limited. <laughs> <laughs> and when you said Minion the first thing, I was like, banana! <laughs> banana! <laughs> so I'm starting to feel like he's making, he's talking some good sense. Yeah. Great, 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 great. I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos, like, I only like this game when everything matches my own personal ideology. <laughs> exactly. Please don't make me be evil. I, I do, I don't like it. Your friend's your friends. I was going to say, did you hear the silent yet? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. You two aren't there. Shut up. <laughs> Sorry. We, we, miss, we miss our time to shine. Um, that's, that's, uh, that's near, glo- near, no, no, no. Greg. I can't. <laughs> that's, that's Greg. That's Greg. No, <laughs> that's, um, uh, that's near Goth. Fuck. <laughs> near Goth Blade Lord. Uh, Nergoth Blade Lord for his first one disengages and steps. Nope, not for his first one. That was dumb. <laughs> dumb, Russ. Rewind. It's my turn. Um, you don't I, see I don't know why I turned yet. this way and then spoke to the rest of the room. <laughs> my we have turn. The audience here. The microphone is right there. Um, it's my turn. <laughs> is that how we're starting our turns? I now? really like this. Uh, it's my turn. 